Hello all, welcome to the FOIP traffic analysis course at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we will look at SIP over TLS plus RTP. So in the last couple of videos, we were analyzing SIP and RTP traffic, and that was the case when both were not encrypted, right? So now let's move on to our second case, which is SIP is encrypted and sent over TLS while RTP is unencrypted. Now on the server side, the configuration, of course, uh, as far as transport is concerned, we select the TLS option. And there is still no media encryption as highlighted. And on the client, similar settings are put. Now the scenario remains the same for the two caller. We have Bob, Alice, and then we have the server in between. So let's actually look at the PCAP file. So inside the sample calls directory, now we'll go to SIP over TLS RTP and open up normal call two parties dot PCAP. Let's apply a filter for SIP, but we see that there is really no SIP traffic in here and that can actually be a wrong conclusion. Uh, let's actually search for RTP as well we once again see that there is no RTP traffic. So does this mean that this PCAP does not have any wipe data? Okay, let's actually see how the plugins are faring. So we'll click on telephony, SIP flows, pretty much see nothing in here. Telephony, RTP streams. Again, we do not see anything here. Now, if we look at this uh, data in more detail, let's click on uh, statistics. Let's actually click on protocol hierarchy. So what we would actually find uh, is that we do have SSL traffic in here, right? And we can see that. And we also see that there is a lot of UDP data and this is this plain UDP data, which is the protocol has not been detected yet as, as it's clear here, right? It just says data, nothing more. While some of these other protocols have been detected. Now, an interesting giveaway is the fact that we see RTCP packets or real-time transport control packets. Generally, RTCP packets are actually sent uh, along with RTP packets once in a while to go ahead and tell the other side how the call is going, right? There are different sender reports, etc. So this is interesting. This actually does point to the fact that there is a possibility that this, or at least some of this UDP data could actually be RTP packets. So based on this initial high level protocol hierarchy, uh, we, we have some basic conclusions which we can make. So the first thing I'm going to do is search for RTCP packets because we know they exist. So we see a lot of RTCP packets in here. The first thing which I would actually note when doing such an analysis is the IP addresses. So 20.1, 130, 132, right? So I actually immediately see there are three IP addresses of interest. Now, let me actually select any one of these RTCP packets and remove the filter. The reason I'm doing this is RTCP packets are sent once in a while after a chunk of RTP, uh, you know, voice data carrying packets have been sent. So typically this RTCP should be interlaced between RTP packets. So once we do that, you'll actually see that specific RTCP packet is around all of these UDP packets. So this makes it very clear that we actually have RTCP packets in here and these UDP packets, if you notice, we see our familiar port 4000 uh, could actually end up being RTP packets. But here is what the problem is. You're probably wondering, well, if it is so, why isn't Wireshark not doing all the familiar stuff that it was doing, right? Wireshark should automatically now go ahead and, you know, uh, decode these packets and show you everything. 
So the important thing to realize is in the last couple of videos when we did RTP and RT, uh, SIP and RTP, you have realized that the SDP packet was actually uh, inside SIP, right? And SDP contained all of that information about what port number, etc., is actually being used by RTP. So Wireshark actually depends on that SDP information to be able to decode these UDP packets. And because SDP is inside SIP, uh, which probably is inside TLS, we cannot see it. So let's verify. So let's go ahead and put in a filter for SSL. And we see that there is a lot of SSL traffic in here. Now the important thing is the same IP addresses are showing up, right? We see 132, 130, uh, and basically 20.1. Now let us look at what is inside the SSL packet or rather which protocol. And if you don't know how to do this, it's very simple. Select any one of the application data packets. And what you'd find is that the content type field actually gives away that information. So if you notice, this specifically says the content type field is sip.tcp. So this is really sip using TCP and that's what is inside the SSL packet. Now this is fantastic because clearly this shows us that this is SIP over TLS and unencry probably unencrypted RTP. Typically, uh, when actually RTP is encrypted, there are other telltale signs, but we'll talk about it when we look at SRTP packets. So, fantastic. So what do we do? Now, the key thing to realize here is we cannot decrypt uh, Sorry, we cannot decrypt TLS, right? Because currently we don't have the certificate or the runtime keys depending on what kind of encryption is being used and what kind of key uh, generation or rotation algorithms are being used. So the only way is to play with these UDP packets, which is right here. Now, now that we know that these UDP packets are RTP packets, we can actually use one interesting hack. And that is, we assist Wireshark and tell Wireshark how to interpret these UDP packets. And we can simply do that by right clicking on UDP and click on decode as. Now by default, it's actually picked up ICQ as the decode as protocol. Click on current, is a long option. Scroll down and you'll find RTP in there. Click on RTP. Click OK, and magically, all of those packets get now decoded as RTP packets, right? Fantastic. So now we could actually go in to Telephony, click on RTP Stream Analysis, click on Play Streams, and there you go, we have managed to recover the call. So as I said, I don't know if you can hear to this clearly, but we'll see. Don't have the audio enabled, my bad. This is caller two. Welcome to Pentester Academy. So as you can clearly see, we can hear the audio. So I don't know if the microphone is picking it up or not, but this is caller one. Welcome to Pentester Academy. Right there you go. Now, of course, because SIP is still encrypted, if we go to telephony and look at SIP flows, well, we aren't going to be seeing anything, right? Uh, so everything related to RTP should actually work. So if you go to RTP, RTP streams, we'd actually see that we have four streams right now, right? We have two callers, two streams for each caller. Fantastic. So this is really how we can go ahead and decode RTP packets in the case of SIP over TLS. So the process, as we mentioned, is very simple. Look at protocol statistics, identify telltale signs like RTCP packets, figure out the IP addresses, figure out if there are UDP packets, then see if there is SSL, look at what is inside SSL uh, based on you know what protocol it is carrying, 
and then use decode as. So this is all I had in mind for this video. The screenshots contain the same thing. And if you enjoyed this video, please recommend Pentester Academy. Thank you.